Are you interested in erasing a peaceful alien population so Wendy's can get intergalactic locations? Or perhaps you enjoy the fine sciences of nature using 12 gauge as your tools? Our journey will teach you everything you need to know to invade the distant reaches of the Milky Way because other planets have the shiny rocks we desire. But before we begin, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Exor Studios. They're the people that made this wonderful game, and you can play the prologue for free right now by clicking the link in the description. And away we go. We start by flying out of a portal as Ashley, the scientist commander, that swears she stands for peace, but her weaponized mech suit that is built to destroy anything, and I mean anything, which she calls Mr. Riggs would beg to differ. To start, we have to clear off this nice piece of land to begin building our HQ, and shove our arm into this ore deposit until we can build a factory to do this for us instead. Now for the next issue, the locals. They dislike our capitalist grind set, and whatever we build will get attacked by them, so we must make lethal- <coughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry, corporate insists that we use more welcoming terms. We must make suggestive forms of entry denial and projectile repellent to dissuade them from inviting themselves into our operating center. Although I personally prefer local hand-to-hand -hand outreach in the community, using a flamethrower to scorch any galactic planet in that general direction. Our next duty is to obtain this resource, which has a fancy name, or you can just call it steel. We must explore to find steel, and since I like to take the scenic route, we often ran into a few enemies here and there. But much like how you'd handle a spider in your home, the best way to dissolve this conflict is by spinning in circles with a flamethrower and setting the entire surrounding area on fire. This shouldn't be here. Say no more. Another useful thing about flamethrowers is their use as night lights and lawn care tools. And I wouldn't worry your pretty little head about the collateral damage. At this point, I realized that my whole life I was lied to. The saying always goes, fight fire with fire, but that's what I'm doing and it's not working. 9mm works just fine though. A short time later, we moonwalked our way to a steel deposit and we definitely didn't stop to jump into the lava to see if it hurt. Whatever you heard is a lie. So after setting up a basic outpost with defenses and learning about the power of portals, we quickly had to return home to disperse the ruffians banging at our gates. However, as the saying goes, there is more than one way to exterminate an entire army of aliens. And one of my favorite approaches is the sit back and spam repair approach. Then when I saw a new attack wave was coming in, I got pretty excited. I love new things. But this wasn't a new thing. This was a straight up Avengers level threat. And they flattened me, smacked me around, and I was told that it was a life lesson. Unfortunately, my life didn't last too much longer as the alien mosh pit completely overtook me. But now that I know the basics, we can dive into the new survival mode. The rules are simple. Don't let them destroy your HQ, and the objective is to survive. Luckily, I'm a survival expert and have won every award that has ever existed ever on survival. Only an hour? I could easily survive for at least... As I was saying, nature is a humbling teacher and you are the student. We started this one by not running too far from the starting area and getting the basics of ore production and power online as quickly as we can. Then I got to work on boxing in our base with multiple layers of protection using the land to our natural advantage. Natural. I also tried to create a type of hot gates here by making an indent in the walls with turrets on both sides to rain down the pain. At some point I learned about the weather and not the 60 degrees on Sunday type of weather, but natural disasters such as tornadoes that are coming to steal your home, or more accurately, your power connectors. They aren't that catastrophic, it's more just really sad to see all these health bars pop up that I'm too lazy to make go away. Shortly after the tornado, we had another wave of creatures roll through, and I began thinking that maybe this was karma for all the war crimes we've committed. But then we had an ion storm that rolled in, which served as a giant power bank for our electricity storage. This survival run ended with the discovery of 12 gauge, followed by the complete collapse of our empire because I didn't spend enough time upgrading my base. However, watching them destroy an hour's worth of work is actually quite satisfying. On the second try, as a much more enlightened being, I beefed up our automation by making more mining outposts and I started racking my brain about how we can double our DPS, ultimately landing on just making another shotgun for my other hand. No need to overthink it. Especially because you can charge up your shotguns for a shockwave that will hit the enemies so hard, history books will remove their very existence out of fear. And you're probably thinking, oh, but you'll run out of ammo. Shut, Shut. Shut. Eventually, we began seeing the downside about our outpost layout and that we had to build defenses around all of them. And then when the aliens come, they tend to stop by every outpost on their way to the HQ. Combine this with our power pylon strat where we route connectors across the map to connect all the outposts to the same power grid, and you have one of the smoothest brain layouts in the history of the universe. For a few reasons. First, when the power goes out, it goes out worldwide. And second, if an alien trips over one of our power things and breaks it, the power is likely going to go out for at least one outpost, and maybe more depending on where it broke in the chain. Third, 
third, I just said three because it sounds better. With not too much time left in this survival run, we discovered the research tree, where we research advanced weapons like hammer, stick, fire, M32s, and doe drilling, as well as many other base upgrades for our defenses. Obviously, we started by researching hammer, because even tornadoes won't hit a base that has a hammer being researched, and this tornado came to the very tip, then got a glimpse at our research tree, and instead decided to wreck some power lines. And modern problems require modern solutions, so I patched up our power grid through some very advanced and tactical power connector placement. Once we got the hammer and the turbo dodge roll, we basically had the ultimate Dark Souls loadout, and we sought out some volunteers to demonstrate its godly abilities. Oh right, and we got the flamethrower too. After sufficiently getting every one of my outposts absolutely destroyed, I looked in the top left and realized that this was not the final wave. This was the final wave. And after trying to route more power lines to my external power outpost during my final wave, our efforts proved unsuccessful. Our base was fresh out of any power, so our turrets were useless. I was useless. The hammer was not useless, but it was also not enough to stop 3,000 aliens from spawn camping me and my HQ. Now on our third journey, I was pretty sure I had cracked the code. We made a much larger HQ because we needed to have a more protected power grid that wouldn't collapse at the very start of the final wave. Oh, hell no. A hailstorm is here. This means I can't place anything for the next few minutes, so I just need to chill. This is okay. We really needed the rain. After that, we spam repaired our thin defensive line and further diversified our portfolio of power generation and protective measures. Later, I discovered that we built our home next to a minefield. However, I also discovered that we can shoot these and they will hurt the enemies, which is neat. But incidentally, I also ended up nearly blowing myself up when trying to melee a straggler. One of the exciting new things we learned about in this playthrough was earthquakes. They make the screen go burr and damage a lot of things in your base. Fortunately, you can combat this system by spam repairing everything as the earthquake hurts it. They don't call me Bob the Breaker of Souls for nothing. However, I also recently learned of the cell hotkey, and I accidentally sold half of my western defense when trying to repair it. After making an elite western front, we had a great number of aliens attack our eastern front because that's how lucky I am. But thanks to this giant rock and our classic strat to spam repair, we were able to hold them off until I could quickly craft the hammer, at which point I began bonking them through our defensive line until the threat was gone. After winning that thrilling battle, we fixed our southeastern front by walling it off to be forgotten and never thought about ever again. Minutes before the final wave, we had a giant alien horde attack us due to me ignoring the test that I had been given 30 minutes earlier. On the bright side, at least we were able to put our new power fist to use so the enemy could come catch these hands. When the final wave came, I began cannibalizing many of my defenses on the western front to help the eastern front because that's where everyone was coming from. Or so I thought because shortly thereafter, we were surrounded. And because I placed all these buildings so close together, I created a tremendous fire safety hazard and moving around in my base involved a lot of tripping. If it weren't for my new double trouble hammer strategy that does all of the damage, we wouldn't have even gotten this close to winning. And now we've reached my current playthrough. After our many sacrifices and shortcomings, we were blessed by RNG Beast and were given a beautiful starting area. It had lots of natural barriers the aliens can't cross, and thanks to these conveniently placed ore deposits, we got ore production online in record time too. I put a lot more focus on using alternative energy like wind, because air is unlimited, as far as I know. Then we made walls. Lots of walls. And with all of these resources, we were able to make hopious amounts of defense towers around our base. At the 45 minute mark, we were 30 minutes ahead of our last run, as we already began upgrading our HQ to level 2. At the 36 minute mark, we began researching repair towers and ammo production so we can have movie level quantities of ammo in the final wave. But I also needed a fun new toy to play with, so I bumped spear production to the top and then I crafted two of them because that's the optimist way to do melee. Our poking sticks proved to be the best weapon in the game as I could reach through several layers and tickle my enemies on the other side of the wall. After that, we began researching water guns if that water was lighter fluid. Then began placing some of the new things we researched, like repair towers that automatically repair buildings in its radius, and a couple of arty towers to rain explosives from above. Although I was quite excited to see an early preview of this, all the enemies from this wave decided to attack my outposts instead, so I had to give them the old stabbo using our tickle sticks. With 18 minutes to doomsday, we began adding many more layers to our walls as well as mixing in several new types of defense towers. And for safety reasons, I blocked off the least protected part of our base with several layers of walls. And for the first time ever, our defenses look like actual defenses. We even added some of these neat short-range radars, which gives the defense towers the ability to see beyond the view of man or machine. And with the big finale approaching, I added an unhealthy amount of wind turbines to our base because I don't need the power plug getting pulled during our big showdown. Then, any resources we had left went to adding as many layers of walls as I humanly could. And while doing this, I also discovered a way to pop myself up on top of our wall. <laughs> then the time came. The final wave was upon us, so after selling my way out of the box that I accidentally put myself in, and making a few gates I forgot to make, 
I joined the onslaught of artillery on the east side for a short period of time, but they were coming from every angle at this point, and diving into the middle of the crowd made me lose nearly all my health in about 5 seconds. The western front was going strong, so after 30 seconds of assisting with my long range spears, I ran back to the east side to help with the few leftovers there. However, they were nibbling through a 10 deep wall maze while getting barraged with freedom bullets, so nothing too severe. And just when I thought I was done, I saw a red stream coming from the northwest with a boss mixed in, and our rocket supply was dry because the ore production stopped. We held them off for a little while longer, then we must have killed one of the last stragglers from the final wave because Ashley started talking about cake and the victory screen popped up. We took out 23 acceptable casualties, 6,546 antagonistic combatants, produced 3.29 million units of power, and did almost as much damage as our basic turrets with our OP double spear meta. Since you can actually continue after the victory screen and survival, we banished the last few enemies and did a quick walk around of our base to see what it took to hold back the enemies. It took a lot of walls. Once again, I want to thank Exor Studios for sponsoring this video and giving me early access to the unreleased survival mode. This game is a ton of fun, and although the full game release is on October 14th, you can download the prologue for free on Steam right now by clicking the link in the description. Please drop a like if you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.